Now, Black Sam recently gave an incredible interview to Big Boy. And uh, about an hour into it, Big Boy asked him about what happened to Nip in that parking lot. I just realized Nip is gone. How long he been gone? Yeah. Uh, Five years. No, I'm from from this wall. (laughs) My bad. Uh, The the interview that Big Boy and um, Black Sam did, it kind of uh, reignited a lot of the conspiracy theorists that kind of went away after Eric Holder was found guilty back in 2022. Now, let's keep in mind, Nipsey was killed in 2019. That's five, no. Five years. Five years. It's been five years. Black Sam gives the interview, and now he's just, there's just so many people reacting to this interview. In fact, let's, we got two clips of this interview. Uh, Let's play clip number one. Throw it on, you know. At some point, do you feel like any of this is worth it, or were you ready to throw it all away? Oh, no, nah, man. Not 100%, like, crash, crash out, broad daylight, whoever. And, you know, we start figuring out who, 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 they, who the streets were saying it was, and, you know, that's what the whole unit was like, we don't, where, where's this n- at? And, you know, that was the mind space at that point. Yeah. Aside from just dealing with, you know, the reality, you know, but it was go time, man. And, you know, they're going to make sure the kids is good, make sure his kids is good, and make sure we keep going. Is it as random as what the public thought it was? Like, nip seeing somebody. Eric and talked and... I mean, uh, you know, he he already got convicted, so... For me, without without going into too many details... Mm-hmm. Somebody come to the shop. They know we in, we, we in the doorway. When Hustle pull up, we in the doorway. You gonna see me with a hoodie on, and I got a pistol on me. You're gonna see one of my one of the team members in the hoodie, uh, uh, in the doorway with a pistol. That's protocol, when hustle pull up. <clears throat> so it's Sunday, it's busy in there. Why did why, why the not in there didn't follow, follow the protocol? I wasn't there, why they didn't follow it? Maybe they just fucking around helping the customer, doing some fucking customer service. This is what I'm thinking, trying to, you know, transition into some legitimate mm. selling clothes. But nobody was in the, nobody was in the doorway. And um, from my understanding, no boy walked up with no shirt on first to check the scene. Because he know what's he know what he know what's going on in that parking lot. And um, had a conversation. Probably seen nobody was in the doorways. Checked hustle, had on shorts. Checked everybody else. Left. They say came back with a red shirt on. Tiptoed through the alley. And went right and started shooting. So to me, that's premeditated. Number one, there's no red shirts in the hood. <clears throat> you can't buy no red shirt. No, no liquor store sell no red shirt. Number two, when a nigga come through the alley with a red shirt, that's the throw off, or the Bloods did it, or the Inglewood families did it, or the BPS, that's the throw off, red shirt. So for me, he felt he was supposed to, he, he, he was supposed to do a job or somebody sent him or whatever, and he was nervous. He was supposed to hit that alley with that red shirt immediately, but he didn't do that. He came in and he wanted to check the scene. He wanted to make sure he, 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 he wasn't getting into a shootout. And that's, that, that's, my, that's my thoughts on it. All right, man. There's a lot there. Big boy got some big-ass hands. Go ahead. Um, there's a lot there to that Black Sam got the conspiracy theorist thinking. Um, first and foremost, he is alluding that somebody sent Nipsey there. And... With all due respect to Black Sam and the family, this case has been investigated like no other case can be investigated. 
we're talking about cell phone records, communications, um, search warrants, uh, uh, seizing cars, everything. It connects you to a crime that happened on camera. Go ahead. Yeah, to a crime that was caught on camera from beginning to the end. So here's the thing. I'm, I'm going to disagree that anybody sent them for a variety of reasons. First and foremost, who knew that Nipsey was going to pull up at that shop in the first place? At that time, he pulled up at, let's say, 2.50, 2.50 p.m. on that Sunday. So if you, if you think someone sent them there, well, then the list is short of how many people knew Nipsey was going to pull up there at 2.50. And from all the testimony and from all the evidence, very few people, if anyone knew Nipsey was going to be there at 2.50 p.m. He pulls up when he wants to pull up. Now, I do, I do believe maybe Rimpaw. Rimpaw was in that parking lot waiting. It looks like Rimpaw, may, maybe Nipsey and Rimpaw had a rapport. So now you're saying, you, then you, if you believe that he was set up, then you believe Cowboy's part of the setup? You believe Rimpaw's part of the setup? Yeah, and, boy, he sends it to send it there. <laughs> and, and, and there's no evidence whatsoever that there is a link between any of these people and the conspiracy to kill Nipsey. That's the first thing I'll say. Um, he, Black Sam said, and he just glossed over this, they had a conversation, and then he just continued talking. That conversation is crucial. That conversation is critical. That conversation changed the whole tone, the body language, the, the demeanor. If he was not sent. If he was not sent. <laughs> um, that conversation led to Eric going to the car, loading an unloaded gun. So who goes to, who's sent to, to do a homicide and the gun is unloaded? He's loading the gun in front of Bernita Nicholson, who's in the driver, and she's like, what the hell are you doing? And he's just sitting there loading up a semi-automatic weapon. The fact that he's loading up a gun at the scene of the crime that is about to become a crime scene is very indicative of not being sent. But what you got to that say? After the a argument or the, the initial? It's after the argument. After the argument. He had one revolver on him the whole time in his front pocket. But the one that did all the damage was the, was the semi-automatic weapon that he was loading. He unloaded that after the first engagement interaction. Wait, say that again? He loaded it up after their initial. Correct. Correct. Mm. He, he, he went to the car. Okay, he, he has the conversation with Nip. Then he goes to Master Burger to get the food. Then he jumps in the car with Bernita, and then they park in the alley to eat the food. And while he's there, he's loading up the semi-automatic weapon. Those are all facts. Let's deal with the facts. I think you're forgetting it. When he got out of the car, he put his foot on top of the car, and then did he? What do you mean? He, he got out the car in the alley and put his foot on top of the car. The hood? The, the car? top of the car, like. The, the chili cheese fries, whatever he ordered. Oh, it's food, not his foot. Oh, yeah, yeah. The food, not oh. the foot. You're confusing mm -hmm. me. Yeah, I thought you said foot. My bad, excuse me. Mm -hmm. But he put his foot on top of the car and then proceeded to do what he did. So, like, that was just like, oh. It oh. makes you think he was deciding at that time what I should do and it was impulsive. No, nah, it's, just, it's just right on schedule with a person that's off. I think when you look at him in the in the master burger after the conversation with Nip, you see Nip, Eric Holder pacing, contemplating and pacing, and you can tell you could tell there's something heavy on his mind. It's that conversation that Black Sam just kind of just skipped over. They had a conversation, and that was it that that Sam addressed regarding the conversation. But I think the conversation is bigger than what he's talking about. And then also the girl testified, Bernita Nicholson, that the conversation was not friendly. Mm. This was not a friendly conversation, everybody. You know, Cowboy wants to say it was a conversation where there was no, no issue. It was a friendly conversation. Well, why is Bernita Nicholson saying they're calling each other snitch and it was tension and it was unpleasant? No, honestly, when I, when I heard, heard it back, when I, when I heard her uh, interrogation, it, it was more aggressive coming from Eric Holder than, than Nipsey. Just, just, just like, like Cowboy said, though, I ain't going to cap, because the grand jury was kind of different. The statement, but different from when I heard her like talking, her uh, audio. Yeah, but unfortunately, they only released like a minute of that audio. But but she said that Nipsey was just more dismissive, like he don't want to talk to him, and he was more so like, "Well, ain't you a snitch?" And it was the aggression more so came from him. Can I add? Which I was like, and now like, that's kind of different from what I thought I heard like a, maybe whatever amount of years ago. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because initially it was 
Nipsey was calling him a snitch. Right. And it now, turns out they were both calling each other snitch. But what was you going to say, Spider? I just want to add that initially from the streets, direct communication. Rest in peace to the homie, neighborhood Nip the Crip. But I heard more than just asking about it. I heard he kind of went big and told everybody else, like in the store, his money ain't no good over here till he straightened his shit out and kind of like went big on the boy. Now, was, I think you're, ab- you're absolutely right, Spider, because when you look at the, if you zoom in you, on, in your editing software, there's a lot of body language from Nipsey, arms moving, a lot of point is, is, is aggression. Mm-hmm. And I, I could tell you, I've had an aggressive conversation with Nip. I've been there with Nip before. And, and and I was like, I seen that side. Me too. Okay, you too. Yes. Yeah. And and I, I've seen that side after 2011. Two I gained the respect for him when he did it because he assumed that he could get away with it when I didn't know if he knew he could. And we kind of bonded after we had that bump of heads that time. I respected it. Rest in peace, Puto. Rest in peace, Nipsey. God damn. See, I got caught up in the middle of the situation between him and Big U in, mm. two, in 2011 because – Prior to that situation, I was friends with both of them. But after 2011, you had to pick a side. Mm. So at, at, at 2019, from your personal experience, had they graduated beyond that? I believe they, they mended all issues. Now, now if, if you think Big U has something to do with it, 2011 was eight years prior to this. So you think Big U was holding a grudge for eight? He waited eight years to do, as Munchie would say, his big one? Eight years later? But nah. Um, you guys are leaving out him on the yacht with Nipsey. In New York. In New York with Nipsey. Giving him, giving Nipsey an award, and Nipsey's there like smiling as big as you can smile, cheesing, getting an award. Everybody leaves all of this stuff out. Right. From, from a personal perspective, when Nipsey died, I and Nipsey had some very intense conversations regarding the YG and Big Buddha Roof from Treetop. And when Nipsey passed, I talked to Big U very shortly thereafter, and I was surprised to find out Big U knew everything that me and Nipsey had been talking about yeah. in that recent time. So I'm aware that Nipsey and Big U was having an amicable, amicable conversation and dialogue, and Nipsey was sharing things with him that he was dealing with in politics because there was no other way for Big U to be aware of that. And I think it's completely natural and normal in these environments that we grow up in where bros are going to clash. And they clashed in 2011. There's no doubt about it. In 2011, they clashed. But what does that got to do with what happened with Eric Holder in 2019, eight years later? But the only thing I missed, that was key, that, that I just heard right now that I missed when I was listening to uh, the Big Boy interview, he said he was, uh, he, he alluded to uh, Eric Carter being nervous, and that's why he came the first time with his shirt off. Then he came with the red shirt on, with, and what he did throughout that, like with the alley and the red shirt, that's what he's supposed to do from the gate. You yeah, know what I'm saying? yeah, yeah. I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really catch that the first time. You know what I'm saying? But you know, the marathon store and the Slauson Swap Meet and a lot of surrounding venues or places sell red shirts. So much as I wanted to just, accept, but he was saying liquor stores. You know, liquor stores only sell no, he, white he black shirts. He didn't use the word liquor at all. He did. No, I think he did. He, did. he said liquor stores. I think he did say liquor store. He, he so said, that, the point still is. It's but as he said, family. around here, don't no stores, not even Inglewood, Compton, no liquor stores are. They only uh, sell white or black. The marathon store itself sells red shirts. Yeah, they do. It's not plain red shirts. It's not that, that but bro. I'm saying I'm I'm being he verbatim. Use, what he didn't he didn't say plain. So you do you adding words? Okay, but he said, look, look, he said don't know liquor stores around here. Okay, but the, what's more red shirts? What's more liquor important, stores, bro? What's more important? Does what point was Black Sam trying to make by saying that? He just saying somebody sent them, but but everybody alluding that. If he's saying that then, then, uh, somebody sent them, it had to be Big U because Big U, the biggest name through there, and they know they had uh, differences over the years. Rolling 60s is one of the deepest hoods in L.A. County. He could have been alluding to anybody else. It couldn't. It, it, it didn't have to just be Big U. Yeah. And, and if he's going to be that bold, it seemed like, you know, he would, at this point, if he wanted to, speak directly about who he chose to speak about. No, nah, because no, because it ain't no ain't no statutes of limitation. That's that's telling, bro. I, think, well, I mean, if that's the case, he still is insinuating. He alluding. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, he could right. He could have just said what he originally said. I don't want to talk too much about it. And then just ask Big Boy what's the next question. But he gave his little theory hypothesis that was alluding to somebody from the set sent him that had a grudge with him and everyone now on the internet is pointing to one guy okay like you <laughs> right said, from the set though why 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 when he made uh 
when he said what he said, why do everybody assume that he's talking about Big U? Because they had the history they had over the years. Because, like I said, Rolling Sixties from Western, damn near to fucking La Cienega. I mean, La Brea. Well, you think it couldn't have been nobody else that had an issue with him or sent, sent that man other than Big U? Why are they assuming him? Well, they did. Thanks to Black Sam, he did mention DJ Khaled. There are scenarios that everybody are expounding on that include DJ Khaled. So maybe that's kind of leading people to think that both conversations are connected. No, Big Sam brought up the Big U situation, but you have J-Cats, like we ain't got to name him, and he placed himself being one of the dudes that ran DJ Khaled off. But guess what? When uh, mm -hmm. Black Sam said what he said, it went without incident. Everything went good. So that's what I'm saying. Like the internet go do what it do, man. And people, you know what I'm saying? We just got people, people in the right places, the sections and all that shit in, in real time. They know what time it is, but I don't believe Blake Big you had anything to do with anything. I don't even think he was sent. If so, yeah. that was very messy. I think he got mental health problems, drug problems, and he did what he did off of impulse and been off he being emotional. And he's still not speaking. At this point, somebody that was sent that did what he did would have broke by now, I believe, and told everything. Yeah. I think Munchie is, is 100% correct uh, the way you just described it. Mm -hmm. He got emotional. He's probably he, – hey, we learned a lot about his mental state during sentencing. Unfortunately, it didn't come up during trial. But during sentencing, man, we learned about electroshock treatments, mm. uh, all these pills he was taking – um, since he was young. What about the drugs mixed with the mental state? And that's unpredictable what you're going to get out of that. Uh, I want to mention a couple more things. Um, Black Sam in that clip said that the red shirt was supposed to be the throw-off, but it can't be a throw-off when you already showed yourself in front of everybody. Like, he, he already got out the car, shook everyone's hand, had a conversation, no, he, I so think you he can't was throw saying, anyone I off. Think he was saying the fact that he had the red shirt on deck and you can't get in the area, that was his initial plot for it, though. Oh, like he already had it. Yes, that's what's his point. Okay. He, was like, he came over there with these intentions with a red shirt. You can't get one in the area. He only came without it at first to scope out to make sure he wasn't getting in the shootout. And he said initially he came and approached just to check it out because he was nervous in the first place. Well, the, the body language of Eric Holder when he got out the car does not show a nervous person. He, he, was, he was greeting everybody. He shook Rimpaw's hand, he shook Nipsey's hand, and he shook um, Cowboy's hand. And uh, actually, I think, it, yeah, but he didn't shake Nipsey's hand when he left because Nipsey was engaged in a conversation with Cousin Carrie, so there was a little bit of a, a distance. But it seemed like a regular pull-up, hey, hi, with the homies. But there was... Reference to uh, Nipsey saying, "Oh, there, there goes, there goes Shitty. What, what, like, what is he doing here? Mm. You know, it was already like, bro, ain't supposed to be here. <laughs> you know, well, how is this gonna play out? You know, how is this gonna go? I heard that phrase. Yeah. So he, if he was sent, like you said, bro, they would have drove by. Or who said? Because none of none of none of us think that. No. Oh, okay. You talking third person? He, he perhaps wasn't sent, like okay. you said, because okay. if he was, you know, me and you, we know the protocol, bro." You drive by and see exactly what you're going to get. There's no need to come with the shirt, order the fries and all that. Nobody sees you. You drive by, you see it. You go put your red shirt on, tiptoe up from the Slauson side. Don't come from that side. Come from that side, get your man and be ducked off. Now let me ask you, does this sound like the activity of a guy that was, that was sent to go do something? Go in the store, order some chili cheese fries. Then not have enough money, go to the car and ask Bernita for a couple more dollars so I can go buy a drink. And let the broad come out, ask for a picture with me. And then, yeah, well, he didn't have any control over that. So. Yeah, no, if you driving her, if she driving you, you to go. You tell her to stay in the car. Yeah. No, no, if you yeah. driving her to come put us on work and go accomplish something, why why would this female hop out and take a yeah, picture Yeah, that's a good point. Them? That's a good point. If, if you got someone driving you to go do some dirt and that's the plan, she never gets out the car. Hell She's no. getting out the car to take a picture with Nick. Keep it That's running. a killer under pressure, contemplating in real time. <sighs> he, it probably would have something that could have happened that made him change his mind. But whatever that was didn't happen. The conversation, man. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I think he'd be shot up like that. All, ba based on me being a, a across the street, down the street rival, I believe he'd be shot up like that. Uh, Every time he go through there. Often. Yeah, and I don't think it's unusual for this girl, Bernita Nicholson, who's only dated him for a month, to 
to see him with guns. She testified that every time she was with Eric, he had guns. Hmm. She said when he went to his apartment with his uncle, or yeah, with his uncle, they had guns. So in a in a one month period of dealing with Eric, guns was normal. Was there any confirmation that she was a Hoover affiliate or anything? No, no. Munch and I talked about this no, we, the other day. We, we, we talked about that, right? Mm-hmm. We talked about right. And I'm I'm standing on it. Mm. Not You're standing on it. Mm. The on, girl that was a hold Hoover on, hold and Bernita Nicholson. Hold on, you doing the Munchie and Spider are, are two different hold women. Hold on, uh, hold on, Alex B. Uh, Alex Lowe, you doing the Munchie and Spider Lowe? Hold on, three eight eight three. Now, 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 the girl they sent from Hoover, not her. She had history with this particular Rolling 60. Mm. I ain't going to say her hood name, but she had history with this particular Rolling 60. And that's where it get intertwined at. Okay, but that's not the question Spider asked. Spider no, asked. No, no, no. I, no. I just threw my little nines and twos in there. I just want to know if it, did she ever no, confirmed having no, it. No, I want to make that clear that no. Bernita Nicholson, the girl who, who was dating Eric Holder for that month, has no gang ties whatsoever. Mm. No. She's a square. She's a. She worked as a. I don't want to say a nurse. A live driver. She did some little, yeah. probably some in home care type. She did thing. some in home care type stuff. She yeah. was live driver. She met him live driving. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they both lived in Long Beach. So good girls love bad boys. Y'all gotta figure it out, good girls. And I think she was a girl that was desperate for some male attention. That's what it is. It ain't the mm. good boy. She. She. Mm, I don't want to say. <laughs> yeah, kick back. <laughs> she was just a, a a young lady that was desperate for male attention. Eric Holder shot his shot from the back of that um, lift. They had sex and, a few and, times. And they exchanged information, and they st- had a one-month relationship. Mm. All right, there's no other history between this girl and Eric Holder. That's deep. And uh, let's see, the last thing I want to say about that last clip is that um, I don't know. I don't know how... Black Sam can come to the conclusion that he was supposed to hit that alley from the jump and shoot Nipsey like that. He believes his plan was to do that from the beginning. There's no if you just watch it play out, you can tell that that he just can't. He decided to do this as he was there. Well, like I said, I look at it like a brother grieving, and he want to know why. Mm-hmm. He just ain't go. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure he's thought about this probably more than all of us. Come but on. he he just not thinking. Uh, Rash, uh, he, he logically, bro. He, he, I never lost a sibling, you know what I'm saying? So he thinking like, nah, this ain't, you know what I'm saying? He, he can't but be. He's aware of all the current tensions, and when something that unexpected happens, but the current, it's natural okay. for you to just like, damn, we was into it all them. It might be totally unconnected, but I think you naturally start when something that unexpected happens, and you have things that could have possibly brought about that type of uh, result. In play, it's just hard for him to separate the two. But it, but as far as this internet shit, I, I answered that entered it uh, maybe last year June doing a podcast and thing, and I'm starting to know you can't give everybody attention because you got people like Loose Cannon that would derail you, and he he, he got a he got a cold imagination, attention seeker, and he got Thank mental health Cannon. problems. So like you can't listen to people like that. And we talking about real life situations, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. Um, before we play the second and last clip, I just think that undermining the conversation that Nips and Eric had is going to cause you to lose why what happened happened. Cowboy does that, doesn't really want to talk about the conversation that Eric and and Nipsey had, and Black Sam doesn't even want to address that conversation. And I I think to a certain degree, it it tarnishes Nipsey's legacy to a certain extent Mm. because as a multimillionaire... As a top rapper, as this mogul, you out there politicking some mm. snitch stuff that's really, at the end of the day, not your lane. Mm. And I, and Cowboy knows that. I don't think it tarnishes reputation. I mean, it's, it's legacy. Uh, it, it's a question mark, and there, it's just it, it's left to everybody. Uh, whatever you want to go with, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, everybody but- got their own conclusion to go draw. The only person really knows is Rand Paul. Rand Paul's still around. Look, how, and Rand Paul talked to, to Big Sam, I mean, uh, Black Sam, believe it. Here's how it tarnishes it. We talked about this before with T.I. and other people. What percent of the people care about who snitched on who? Very few. So what percent of the fans would be very disappointed that you were having a snitch conversation? No, and some people large. might be fueled by large, that. Yeah. Large, yeah. No, no, they'd be fueled by that like, oh, Nipsey are real when he pressed this line. That's, a, that's the that's small the group. That's the point trying to make. Yeah, that's the, that's the minority. 
Most of the people do not care who's snitching on who. How do we know that's the minority, though? What? Now, how do we know that's the minority? Really, it's always rare, bro. That's what we going off of? I mean, what else? Morals over money. Money usually is more popular. You know you're taking a rare approach when you say morals over money. You said morals over money. You said the opposite. That's the rare. That's the real. Real is rare. Yeah. The average person is going to pick monies over morals. Yeah, so, all right. So, um, let, let's let's go to um, the second clip. Not saying nothing crazy. You're going to come. You're going to tuck your tail and be humble. And if not, you're getting beat up on the spot. And we done did it a million times. Hustle done did it a million times. So, the fact that he left, tell me everything I need to know. It was no argument. You know, it was no, it was no, 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 it was no sense of threat. Because with that come, like, hey, be on deck. Yeah. It, it was yeah. none of that. It was just, you know, to me it was, let me come through, let me see what's going on, and then let me, you know, in this broad daylight, man, and it's, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of unanswered questions, man. You don't believe he had any dialogue with, with Nip that day, or did anybody say he said something? Yeah, no, they had they had dialogue, but it was in the mix of him coming up, talking to bro, and you know, whatever whatever transpired, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't an aggressive dialogue. It was just it's maybe small talk, and then maybe people saying Nip brought something up to him. Okay, he may have, but it wasn't uh to me to me that don't. Whatever the dialogue was, that didn't that that didn't um, that didn't justify or that didn't that didn't turn into that. You know what I'm saying? He he came there for he came there for a reason, and man and, and man got the reverses. I mean, he got the you know charges reversed because Hustle asked him something about it and humbled him real quick. But see, I think um, mm. you know it's gonna come to the light. All righty, so. Come on, bro. That say a lot. Yeah, let me let me go yeah, through. He talked. He said a little too much right there. Yeah, let me go through the main hold points on. of that. Like, That's not saying too much. Okay, hold up. Hold, hold that thought. Hold that thought. I want to go through the main points of what Charges he just said. Uh, one thing he says is there was no argument. That's untrue. He said that um, any dialogue it wasn't aggressive. That's untrue. Hmm. And let me just remind everybody. I was at the trial, and I heard all 15, 20 witnesses that came to court. Um, Nip brought something up. You see how he downplayed that? No, Nip brought something up that was very crucial. Um, the dialogue, whatever the dialogue was, Black Sam says, it doesn't justify what Eric did. I agree, but the, uh, but the streets don't always agree with that. But then he added. And, and then wait, last point, the last point. Um, and then he says he came there for a reason. And uh, he said he probably the evidence doesn't, doesn't came support for a that. reason. And when he was asked what he asked, he said maybe the charges was reversed. Meaning. Yeah. He's assuming Eric came there to ask Nipsey about a similar situation of himself. Hey, they were what I didn't understand, even while I'm listening to the witnesses, was who was really calling who a snitch. That's what he just made. Oh, yeah, but he yeah. said the charges were reversed. Yeah, that's what I'm surprised to hear. But so, see, no one knows that because Cowboy and Rimpaw are the only two people that could really tell us what was in that conversation. And we already know we already know Cowboy. Doesn't want to deal with that conversation. Rampa, Rampa, Rampa ain't gonna talk. Yeah, Rampa was there for the whole conversation. Yeah, Rampa, Rampa, I just said that. Rampa, didn't I say that? Rampa, said cowboy. He said Rampa, Rampa, Rampa and, cowboy. and Cowboy were okay, there for the bad. entire conversation. Okay. Now the girl Bernita, she jumped out the car and heard about a minute and a half of the four minute conversation. So about two and a half minutes, she wasn't even there for. So even Black Sam don't even know what that conversation is unless. Unless he's going by cowboy, like Spotter but pointed I, out, keyword the charges was reversed. What do that mean? He's shocked it, with it, that. It, it sounds like Ned might have brung us some snip, snitch allegations to uh, Shitty, and then Shitty reversed it. Yes. He said, "Ain't you a snitch?" See, the girl confused me because Bernita Nicholson testified that that um, Eric was calling Nip a snitch. And, that's and what Black she Sam is saying Nip flipped it on him. You bringing this up to me? Now I'm finna ask you something. Hey, so he's giving us something that we we yes. he's, he's helping us understand Bernita Nicholson's testimony now. Right, 